If I don't have it, I'm not really fully satisfied. Dear friends, greetings from Florida. Ah, boy, do I miss this place. Uh, we just came to Boca Raton to visit uh, some new friends. And uh, we came here yesterday. And before that, we were in Palm Beach, where we actually served for about three years. And uh, I tell you, it was, uh, it was tough just to see the ocean, uh, to see old friends, um, a different lifestyle all together. Um, part of me was, was kind of coveting this, you know, I miss that. I want that again. And if I don't have it, I'm not really fully satisfied. And uh, I was reflecting actually with that mindset on a scripture that is beautiful, that Paul actually writes while he is in prison in Rome. He's writing to a church in Philippi, you know, to the Philippians saying, guys, I've learned the secret, the secret to be content. It's something that is learned, you know, something that is innate in us, so we need to actually work at it. But he said, no, the secret of being content with plenty and in want. You know, sometimes you might think, well, it's easy to be content with plenty. I, I don't know. I don't know because... While we're doing ministry in Palm Beach, we had some situations that were almost tragic, honestly. I remember one in particular, you know, this one person that was extremely wealthy, yet he would say, Papo, I, I actually envy my butler. I said, you envy your butler, why? So, well, because he's gonna go home and his wife probably prepared a beautiful meal with him. He's sitting down with his kids. They're talking about what happened during the day. There is love, there is warmth. So I go home, I have no idea where my wife is. Uh, probably the chef prepared the meal and maybe the kids are going to show up, maybe not. They, they really don't care about me. They just want to see me dead so they can inherit what I have accumulated. And that is, that is tragic. I mean, what are you living for? You're accumulating all this and then you cannot even enjoy it with, with your family. You know, it's pretty sad. And uh, that made me think, you know, how many of us really sometime covet something else instead of saying you know thank you god for what is before me the day that is before me the little things that are before me little things that if you put in perspective many times are a huge wealth in comparison to some other parts of the world so now obviously yeah it's beautiful to be here i'm looking at the ocean it's right in front of me right here and I miss it, you know, I, I would love the idea of saying, okay, I'm going to have a boat parked right in front of the house so I can just take it out, go spearfish whenever I want. Sure, I would love that situation, but can I actually appreciate the other things that I have? And, and Paul learned that secret. He's saying, you know, no matter the circumstances around me, my strength is in the relationship that I have with my maker that nobody can take away from me. So it's not circumstantial. It's not that my contentment comes from having certain things. My contentment comes by being eradicated in the relationship with God through Jesus Christ. And that's my challenge, I guess. Uh, and the challenge that I want to throw out at you as well is learn to appreciate that more, to develop that uh, feeling of contentment, which brings also peace instead of that rush, or I need to accumulate more. Just like uh, Rockefeller, when he was interviewed many, many years ago, at the time he was the wealthiest person on earth, and the journalist asked, how much is enough? You know, and he said, well, one more dollar. And that shows that void that a lot of us do carry inside of us. So that's the challenge. And uh, meantime, tomorrow I'm gonna go out and fish. <laughs> so I'm gonna fill my, my inner back account here uh, for days ahead where I will be missing the ocean. So have a great weekend and I catch you next week. Ciao.